Welcome to this Radisys 5G solution demo. Radisys, along with ARM, plays an integral part in the evolving 5G ecosystem. As part of this ARM 5G Summit, we'll demonstrate capabilities in 5G NR deployments with solutions that enable flexible design options, 3G PP split 6 design, and a combined RUDU unit with the small cell also known as AIO or all-in-one. In this demo, we'll be showing the overall CIG setup hardware architecture. We'll cover two end-to-end -end variants, one with an external 5G CN and one with an internal 5G CN that we also refer to as network in a box. And finally, we'll go through the 5G NR demo for external 5G CN setup. In this diagram, the hardware is shown as a single CU module and the board type is NXP2160. It also has two DU modules, both of which are NXP2160 boards. The 5G CN setup is hosted on an external server. The CU is running on an NXP2160 and DU, and upper layer software is running on a separate NXP2160 board. The network in a box setup is a 5G CN internally hosted configuration. The CU and 5G CN is running on a single NXP2160 and the DU, an upper layer software, is running on a separate NXP2160 board. A couple of key points on this setup. We'll be using TDD duplexing mode, N78 frequency band, DDDSU periosity, 100 MHz bandwidth, 4T2R number of layers, and the QAM256. The demo scenario will walk through the attachment and detachment with iPerf data OTA with commercial user equipment. So this is the application server. The, the application server will be running in one of the 2160 board and CU software will be running in another 2160 board. Whereas the L1 and uh, Astri layer, upper layer L1 and Radis's DU software will be running on another 2160 board. The 5G CN is already up and running. So we can start running the GNOBE now. So I'm starting with the CU module. Starting the upper layer L1. And then the DU module. Yes, the cell is up now. So let me start with the registration. So I'm turning off the airplane mode. So the registration is complete and the preview session establishment is also done. So we can see the uh, UEIP uh, here. So here we can see the uh, IP address assigned by the uh, code network. Also, we can see in the Spark tool, we can see the P, uh, PLMN transmitted by the GNODB and the band and the bandwidth information, as well as the slot format used uh, uh, by the GNODB. And these are the RSRP received by the UE. So while running the data, we can see the other uh, information, such as the blur information and the throughput pair, lay, uh, each layer, we can see that. So IPUF client uh, will be running from the application server. The Spark tool shows the throughput in each layer. So now to run the uplink data, uh, I'll be starting the IP of client in the UE side and uh, application serv uh, server where I'm running the IP of server. So I'm pumping the 20 Mbps um, uplink data. So we can see the uh, IP of server can receive this data. So the CU stat shows we have NGU as well as FNU interface. So the first two stats shows what has been uh, received from the uh, from the NGU and what is sent down to FNU. And this interface, the, the down to stats shows that what is being uh, received from the FNU and what is sent to the uh, uh, NGU. So we can see that in case of a downlink data, the, so in case of a downlink data, we can see the 1030 dot Mbps is received from the NGU and the same is being uh, pumped to the FNU. And here else as well, in case of an uplink data, uh, this is received from the FNU and uh, the above information, uh, which is 20.81 Mbps is sent to the NGU interface. 